In this presentation, we will take a look at the payback period and break even time. Information is going to be up top where we have the new equipment consideration. That's going to be our scenario, the consideration of the purchase of a new piece of equipment with the investment or initial cost, initial outflow of 249000 The payback period required two years. In other words, it needs to pay back for itself within two years. We have to get the cash flow back within that two-year time period. Then we have the return on investment required. It's going to be the 9%. In other words, we need a 9% return in order to accept the investment. The cash flows then after that initial investment of the 249000 the inflows, what we're going to get from that investment being periods 1 through 5, 48600 We're assuming years here. In the first year, 52200 year 2, 75900 year 3, 94300 year 4, and 125000 year 5. Note here, Payments are not equal. These aren't the same payments, of course, not an annuity, and therefore the payback period calculation, not as straightforward. How do we figure out, in other words, when we're going to get paid back this investment given an uneven cash flow? We have to do a little bit more work in order to do that. Remember, the payback period is not considering the time value of money. We're looking at the time at which the cash flows received will e equal the initial investment. One way to do this is we can say, all right, let's take a look at each year individually. We'll break out the year, we'll break out the cash flow, and then we'll have a running balance. The running balance is just going to be for year one, of course, the same as the initial investment. The initial investment, that 249, 249,000, same for the cash flow and the running balance. Then in year one, we've got the uh, 48,600. Within the running balance, that's going to be the 249,000 negative balance plus the 48,600, and then we get the 200,400. In Excel, this is a really nice and easy thing to do. We can set the first formula, use autofill to copy it down. It'll work quite well. What we're looking for, of course, is for the time period at which this negative time number turns positive, because that's going to be the period in which the cash flows received are going to be greater than the payment. So then we have year two, we have the 52,200. So the 200,400 minus the 52,200 gives us the 148,200. We're still negative, so we need to keep going. We're going to go to year three, where we have the 75,900. The 148,200 negative plus the 75,900 positive gives us the 72,300. Then in year four, we've got the 94,300. The 72,300 plus the 94,000. 300 it gives us a positive 22,000 therefore some somewhere between year three and four and four three point something is where we have that break even period where we flip and the cash flows have paid themselves off we paid off that initial investment then in year five we of course have the 125 the 22,000 plus the 125 gives us the 147 so now we know within the year that it happens, we could get more detail. We could say, well, well we know that. Now we want to get you know, a little bit more precise. Well, we could say, then take our information. This is the total cash flows. This is the running balance. Note that the running balance at the end equals the sum of the total cash flows. So then if we think about it in this format, we're going to say that the year three, we had the 72,300. 72,300 still not paid off. If we divide that then by the 94,300 that happened in year four, we can get the percentage of the year that, uh, that it was paid off in 0.77. And then if we add the three years to that, we're going to get it got paid off in 3.77 uh, years. So in other words, we know it got paid off somewhere between three and four. We don't know exactly when between three and four. At the end of year three, we owed 72,300, 72,300. We paid in year four uh, 94300 So if we take year three divided by the payments that happened, we're going to get the 0 0.77, and that's going to be the partial year that we have. So then we add the original three plus the 0 0.77, we get the 3.77.